Only three more days, two more days, and there we go. The Imperial Federation is completed. The Empire strikes back. Seven million went power with uh, the limited conscription. 1,600 factories in 1941. And uh, this is how much of the world uh, we already control. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are bringing our fascist UK run to its grand finale. Naturally, if you haven't watched them yet, uh, make sure to check out the previous parts of this run to see exactly how we got to this point. I will also include uh, a link uh, to the playlist in the description of the video. And actually, we already control everything we need for our ultimate fascist empire. We will uh, be able to core our dominions, uh, the USA and uh, most of Europe. But for that to happen, we also need uh, to wait until we can complete the Imperial Federation and the Imperial Conference uh, focuses. And we still have some time before that. Now, we could just uh, chill peacefully until then, uh, but then uh, we wouldn't be a proper fascist galactic empire, would we? So what we are going to do instead is invade other countries and take their freedom. And uh, we're going to start with the USSR, although probably they are pretty short on freedom already. Now before we start, as usual, if you're enjoying the content I make, uh, please do not forget uh, to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps. Uh, also feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any doubts or suggestions for further improvements. Now that's all for the introduction, so let's get into our initial setup. And actually we already set up the army in the previous video, but let me recap briefly what we did. So we decided to assign one of the offensive armies to the area of uh, Lithuania and after that they will go after Latvia and Estonia and possibly push to Leningrad from here. Our second offensive army is uh, pushing this uh, weird Polish puppet that was created, but of course if you don't have it in your, in your run it's the same. It's just like the Soviet Union. They will push to the area of uh, Minsk, then probably we will go to Smolensk and uh, eventually to, to Moscow. The third army is pushing the southern part uh, of uh, the Soviet Union. So uh, Vinnytsia and then Kiev, then probably Odessa. And finally we go into Crimea, Rostov and uh, eventually Stalingrad. As for the defensive armies, we assign them to protect uh, the front against uh, the Soviet Union. As you can see, we are a bit above the limit, uh, so as soon as we get a few more um, puppet divisions, uh, we're actually going to create a third uh, puppet army and probably assign them to the protection of uh, Crimea. And now, something else that came up in the comments as well is, uh, as you can see, we already have uh, the possibility to reduce uh, the autonomy of uh, some of our subjects. However, we are a bit short on political power. Now, you can, if you get these events, you can uh, reduce the autonomy of your puppets uh, or dominions, uh, but uh, be careful because uh, we do need uh, to have enough uh, political power for the Imperial Conference. Uh, that's the absolute priority. Okay, I would say we can go. So, war on the Soviet Union. I expect this war to be fairly challenging, but let's see how it goes. And let's immediately start uh, justifying on uh, Lithuania as well. I think we can start uh, both offensives down here and see how it goes. I expect them to struggle a little bit, at least at first. I believe our planes are still getting in position. That's another reason why we are struggling a bit more with the first push. Oh my god. That's another... I didn't mention it in the last video, but another big reason not to make several puppets is to avoid this thing every time you start a war. Okay, we got the claim on uh, Lithuania, so let's go right away. This will also uh, create a wider front uh, for the Soviet Union to take care of. But we also want to justify a claim on uh, Latvia immediately. Let's go. Okay, Lithuania is already down. Now we want to get ready for uh, Latvia, though we will take uh, a little bit longer to get the claim. So maybe in the meantime uh, we can help the push here a little bit more. I heard the collaboration government being completed. I hate that I didn't get the notification. I don't think we can get another collaboration government, to be honest. I think the war will be over before that, but just in case we are going to start spying on them. Okay, they also declared war on uh, uh, on Finland. Hopefully Finland would not join any faction. I don't want other people to be involved into this. Let's claim Estonia as well. Okay, I think I will go after Latvia right away. Okay, Latvia is already down. Very good. And uh, as I expected, this war is pretty tough. I think our casualties are very high already. Yeah, 74,000. It's pretty high casualties. Soviet Union is uh, putting up a fight. That's good. And challenge is, is, is welcome at this point. 
There is some potential for encirclement here. Not the easiest one to get though. But we can try to rush uh, Bomela and see. Oh, the, they actually annexed uh, uh, Estonia. So we can actually take it directly at this point. We don't need to wait for any claim. But I don't think they are ready with their divisions in there. So we can probably take it very fast. Okay, we got a first, in, a first encirclement in here. It's very nice. Okay, this will really help. But this and the next technology, the next um, doctrine will uh, really, really help uh, our divisions push a bit better. Okay, another nice encirclement here. Now, oh, of course, we're also pushing in winter, which is great. As you know, pushing the Soviet Union is win in winter is a very smart thing to do. We can afford it. I think we do need to get a couple more supply hubs uh, for the push to Moscow. Moscow is always a bit tough to push and go all the way to Bryansk. That would be great. And here we can try to go all the way to, to Kharkov, maybe. And Rostov. Okay, I think we can create another, another army now. I will start preparing this army in the southern part of the Soviet Union and they will uh, take care of the... Crimea border later on. Okay, I will uh, start uh, the last collaboration government. I'm actually curious to see if we can get it or not. But if you can in your run, uh, I would suggest uh, starting it. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, if you get stuck with the Soviet Union somewhere, the collaboration government is going to help a lot. Moreover, if you get three collaboration governments, instead of puppeting the Soviet Union, you can also annex them and then uh, release them as a as a collaboration government, which is actually is actually better. So you also have that option. That option itself might make it worth it uh, uh, waiting. It depends on uh, how close you are to winning. So we will check a bit later and decide. Let's say the wise way to play this war would be to wait until the end of winter, get the third collaboration government, and then it would be a much uh, smoother invasion. But we are trying to rush it. Half the part of the push up here, the area of uh, Leningrad, without supplies, is very tough. I think we can try another encirclement here. And I can see another possible one here, though we don't have units in here. Oh, I did not pay attention to Crimea. We got all of Crimea without me even noticing. Yeah, that's, that's very good though. I'd rather push uh, from Kharkov, uh, Rostov uh, to the area of uh, Voronezh and um, Stalingrad. So let's go for something like this. Considering that we do want Rostov. We do need to find a solution for this uh, Leningrad push because we're struggling a lot here. Okay, three civilian factories. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, since we don't have the Soviet Union yet, uh, we could be upgrading some of the infrastructures at the border to help with supplies. Uh, but another thing that I would suggest doing is investing in uh, your dominions uh, so that their autonomy will be a lot uh, lower later. And uh, infrastructures are a good choice because uh, if we want to build more, Later on, uh, we will already have the infrastructures to do so. So I will start developing uh, Canada. If you have the, if they have resources, it's even better. Let's let's do a bit of uh, South Africa as well. Actually, all of it. Uh, I will also do all of Australia. And uh, we are out of manpower, which is not great. Uh, but after taking down the Soviet Union, will be will be fine. Actually, most of the manpower. Yes, we had some casualties, but yeah, fair, fair amount to be honest. But most of the manpower is gone into the occupation, unfortunately. So until we take care of the Soviet Union, we cannot really fix that problem. Okay, we're getting it now. Nice. We'll improve uh, things massively up here. And then we may want to push a little bit more up here, but not that much. And I don't know what's going to happen with Finland. Uh, it, let's see if we, we get uh, a wide peace between the Soviet Union and Finland, or if they continue the war. And uh, these units, it's quite a lot of them. I mean, here, if they are not careful, we can get an encirclement. Quite a bit of divisions that they are losing here. That's good. And we basically freed uh, this army because now there is no point in pushing uh, further up here. No victory points. So, at this point, this army... We're going to reassign it and we're going to use only the puppets to defend uh, to defend this area. Hey, the main push that I want is, uh, is here. Oh, we got Stalingrad as well. Let's check uh, the war score. Okay, they are not that close to giving up. And how close are we to getting the collaboration government? 79 days. You know what? Maybe worth it. Maybe worth waiting. Well, the war didn't go very well, I think. If the war goes well, you can, um, you can end them before the collaboration government, but... They are starting to lock units. The encirclements uh, are working. Oh, nice. Moscow is down. Very important. Let's see if we can get this done now. Because uh, uniting these two fronts would really help. As well as closing this one. Now, the big advantage here is now we have another defensive army that we can deploy on basically the entire front. I think the Soviet Union is, uh, is done. 
26 days. That's perfect, actually. I think it's perfect timing. So I'll actually make a save, uh, and I will use this to test a couple of things, uh, because uh, for a while I have been wanting to test uh, the difference between uh, annexing, puppeting, and uh, uh, creating a collaboration government after annexation. I might actually cover this in a different video, though, because... Uh, this may be a bit uh, time consuming also I don't want to reload the game too much so for now what we're going to do is we're going to annex them and create uh, the collaboration government now the annoying thing about Finland is they don't have enough words to, to take anything but this will make the, the peace conference a lot longer now first of all we want to puppet Lithuania and Latvia because uh, we do not have any choices Ad alternative choices there also Mongolia also Tanutuva and then we annex the Soviet Union. That's fine, although I for some reason cannot take the resource rights and war reparations anymore. I hope one day they do fix the peace conference, because if you just don't do it in the perfect order, for some reason you can no longer take uh, resource rights and war reparations. It's not very important because it's Latvia and uh, Lithuania. So not a lot of resources. Most of the resources are indeed in the in the Soviet Union. We also want uh, to invest now in uh, Vladivostok, and we want to increase uh, improve the bottlenecks of the supply hub in uh, Vladivostok as well. We cannot do that yet, though. And we want to prepare a naval invasion of uh, Japan. So let's uh, prepare our fleet. Um, actually, I will not send the fleet there, otherwise they will kill my units with attrition. I will send them here. But uh, another very important thing to do at this point is unblock uh, the uh, Mediterranean Sea regions so that our navy can actually go there faster. And uh, for the naval invasion, uh, we can use any of our divisions. Let's see if there is uh, if they took a lot of casualties. But actually, the field hospital is amazing. And see, we got immediately the manpower back now. And it will be better, of course, after we release the Soviet Union as a, as a collaboration government. So uh, while we take Japan, uh, we, we have some freedom. Uh, we don't have much to do. And I thought, why not? We can take Yugoslavia, Romania and uh, Bulgaria. So we complete uh, the conquest of the Balkans. And then uh, why not taking Spain and Portugal as well? So for the rest of the run, uh, since we still have some time before the Imperial Conference, uh, we can go after these other European uh, countries okay so i will send uh, the third army to vladivostok with the idea of uh, invading japan and i will use uh, one army at the border with uh, yugoslavia and then we are going to use another army at the border with uh, romania and i don't know exactly uh, how much will be back to the soviet union when we create a collaboration government but in the meantime we'll prepare for that now we want to justify these claims actually one claim on yugoslavia because uh, romania will join uh, automatically uh, while at war with Japan, but we don't want to start a war while at war with Japan. Otherwise, they will join uh, the Japanese faction and then China will take them from us because they will have most of the war score, which is not great. Now, these guys are going, meaning we can cancel this command and start planning the naval invasion. We're going for groups of two from uh, Vladivostok to the area of uh, Kyoto. This harbor here is our primary goal. Okay, something like this uh, should work. Oh, there we go. So the provisional government of the Soviet Union, and I think we can do this. Uh, let's quickly check uh, what uh, this does to our factories. 90k688. Come on, game. You can do it. You okay? Look at this. Okay, we got back to 660 factories. So it's just a, a little bit less factories than, uh, than we get from uh, annexing them. But we don't need to waste uh, units on uh, garrisons. So that's why collaboration government's uh, puppets uh, are very, very good. And uh, you also get most of the resources uh, from them. Uh, you can uh, you can import them uh, at uh, much much more convenient uh, rates. Uh, Eighty for one civilian factory. That's uh, that's very good. Now, free military factories is an another thing, another matter because uh, I really don't know what to produce anymore at this point. Uh, we can do for sure is we can upgrade uh, the the MIOs here. That's always useful. But uh, other than producing upgraded F2 and uh, C2. For tanks, we need some additional researches, and uh, in any case, we'll get them a bit too late. So, yeah, not much that we can produce. I will increase the production of everything. Feel free to produce something else if you want. And I'm going to prepare one army for a puppet army for Spain as well, just in case. And the other ones are pretty much free, so we're going to set them up around here. Now, do not forget with focuses to take develop the Raj and Indian autonomy, otherwise, India will not accept the. Uh, Imperial Conference, that's very important. And these guys will take a while to get to Japan. By the way, uh, let's uh, fabricate a claim on Japan. Uh, Japan is a major, so it doesn't take very long to, to get a claim. 
Now, I feel pretty confident about our political power. I think we have enough. So I will uh, decrease the autonomy of uh, the Dominions. So Australia, Canada, uh, New Zealand, and South Africa. India is also doing very well. So we will not have a problem with India. By decreasing the autonomy, well, you, you do get uh, uh, more factories, so of course that's convenient. Uh, but especially we get a better idea of uh, what we need to develop the most uh, later on uh, to uh, decrease their autonomy. So it is, uh, it is a good idea. And uh, in any case, we get uh, an additional 120 political power when uh, we select uh, all the Imperial Cup. We do have a little bit of uh, margin. Ready! So, uh, in addition to infrastructures, we can also now build uh, military factories in uh, New Zealand and uh, maybe in Australia. Not that we need them particularly, to be honest, since we don't know what to produce anymore. But, in case you do want to go for tanks uh, or some other templates that you like, uh, you can. You might be wondering, why don't we research tanks, uh, since we, we do have the technologies uh, to do so. And the reason is that uh, after we are done uh, with these remaining wars, uh, we control basically almost all of the world. And for the remaining parts of the world that we do not control, if you ever wanted to go for a full world conquest, uh, tanks are not the, not the best solution anyway. You would be better off probably with uh, marines or some uh, or mountaineers or some dedicated templates to take care of uh, these low supply regions. Wait, what? Why? Why? Which claim did we not use? Let's not ask questions. This game is weird. Now, this is the claim that we wanted on uh, Japan. And okay, now we can start the war against Japan. In any case, Japan cannot do anything to us. And uh, while we are at war with Japan, we can start uh, justifying on uh, Yugoslavia. And then later on, we'll do, we'll do Spain as well. What we want uh, is now our fleet uh, to uh, cover the Sea of Japan. By the way, all of this is entirely optional. Let's just be clear about that. Uh, you don't need to invade Japan. You don't need to invade other European countries. We already have everything we need for the Imperial Conference and for fascist EU. So technically in Japan, it would be slightly better to extend the war a little bit so that you can get a little bit more war score uh, versus China. But we are just going to take them down first. Ideally, we want to claim on uh, Spain before taking down Japan if you do want to go after Spain. But uh, that's perfect because we already got our claim on uh, Yugoslavia. Remember not to declare war on them yet. Let's uh, justify on uh, Spain and let's uh, rush uh, Japan because now we need uh, Japan to go down before our claim on uh, Yugoslavia expires. Okay, perfect. Actually, I think we got a slightly higher war score than usual. Not much higher, but slightly higher. So it mm, doesn't matter much what you do here, but uh, I will prioritize my home in Tokyo and uh, Okinawa, as usual. And then if you can, of course, uh, try to get as much as uh, possible of uh, mainland Japan. And depending on your war score, it may be possible to get even all of it. Yeah, nice. We got uh, all, uh, all of mainland Japan. That's, that's actually great. Okay, very happy with this. And now, without losing any time, I don't know where my claim is uh, expiring, but uh, I feel like it might have been pretty close. Now uh, we had one more month, uh, that's okay. So let's go after Yugoslavia and Romania. I will send these guys uh, back uh, to Europe, although it will probably take a while to go back here. And uh, you know what I didn't do and I should have done uh, quite a long time ago? Look at our planes in here. <laughs> I completely forgot about this, but uh, please don't in your run, because these planes are going to make a difference, uh, especially against the Soviet Union. Probably we didn't have that many during uh, the war against the Soviet Union, but look at this, it's crazy. Okay, now we will never lock planes again. And let's start both offensive, uh, offensives and send uh, the Navy back to uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Actually, I would like, uh, maybe from uh, Marseille, we can start a naval invasion of uh, Spain slightly later. Do not expect uh, Yugoslavia and uh, Romania to be much of a problem. They will join the European Federation, which is owned uh, by France, uh, but I don't think France is considered a major. Actually, they already capitulated, so we just need uh, Yugoslavia and Romania to go down. By the way, the mistake here was not taking France entirely in the in the first peace conference when we defeated them. Unfortunately, the Axis didn't do that. Germany didn't do that. So that's why we still have uh, France around. 
Romania is down. Oh, you know what? Uh, we could also take uh, Bulgaria. Yes, absolutely. Let's take Bulgaria too. Oh, perfect. Okay, we got uh, Romania, Yugoslavia, the remaining part of Free France. Uh, and soon we'll get Bulgaria as well. So in this case, we just puppet everyone. Perfect. And we get ready for Spain. I'm going for one offensive army up here. Because this is a difficult push. Oh, you know what? Actually, we can go from uh, Gibraltar. We had Gibraltar as the UK, which is great. Let's go from Gibraltar with one army and another army. Unfortunately, we need uh, to take care of uh, uh, Bulgaria. You're not walking. Right? You're not telling me that you're walking all the way from uh, Japan to to France, right? Guys, what the hell are you doing? This freaking trains for fuck's sake. And uh, with Indian autonomy completed, we can now hold uh, the Imperial Conference, uh, which is great, uh, but it also means uh, that we want to improve relations with all of our dominions. Uh, so we'll start with Canada. Now, as you can see, we already have a plus 100, so that's great. Uh, but the Imperial Conference is going to give us a penalty of minus 100. So just to be safe, uh, we want to improve relations with all of them. Canada. South Africa. Australia. New Zealand. And India. We don't care about Malaya. Okay, we got the claim on uh, Bulgaria, so let's go after Bulgaria and then we will have to go after Spain immediately because uh, we're about to lose the claim. Let's do Spain as well. And finally, let's also justify on uh, Portugal. This was faster. Uh, oh, come on, Romania, serious. Perfect. Now that we freed another army here, we can send them to the northern border border with Spain. Maybe we can start pushing Spain from north too. Oh, let me mention one thing which is important. Uh, now we are taking Spain, Portugal, uh, Bulgaria, Romania separately. But technically, if you want to if you want to go for a world conquest, the best uh, tactic would be to claim all of these countries, to tug all of them uh, while you're at war with a major. Ideally with a fascist major, if they're fascist countries, communist major, if, you're, if they are democratic or communist. So we should have done this uh, during the war with the Axis uh, to get the best possible results. Although Spain doesn't join them actually, but uh, Romania, Yugoslavia and Bulgaria possibly would have joined them. And uh, the reason we are doing it now is that this was not meant uh, to be a full board conquest. This will not be a full board conquest. Uh, simply while we are waiting for the conference, we have nothing else to do. Why not expanding a bit more? That's that's uh, the reasoning. I have a video with Japan in which we go for a world conquest. Uh, and um, yeah, you should check that one out uh, if you want to plan a world conquest from the very early game. Because that uh, that one is meant in that way. But the Iranian Union, that's not good for example, see? Because uh, now other countries might join them and Spain will not join them, but Portugal may. And I don't want to be at war with the Ecuadorian Union. Democratic Ecuadorian Union is the only thing that Portugal can join. I think there is a pretty decent uh, chance that uh, Portugal joins them. So we may have to give up on Portugal. Because I really don't want to go to Ecuador. We never gives up easily. Well, now it would be time to give up. Okay. Perfect. So let's pop at Spain. And now, in terms of conquest, the only other thing that I would conquer is uh, Portugal, so that then uh, we own uh, all of uh, Europe except for Switzerland, but I'm not going to wait for uh, one billion days uh, to get uh, the, the claim, so Switzerland will be there, peaceful, as they should. And Portugal. Portugal is a tricky one, because if they join uh, the South American coalition, uh, then I will literally kill myself. Uh, if they don't, we can take them. The only chance, I think, is to take them very fast. We can try, but if they join that condition, I will just reload because I don't want to fight them. So, let's see how it goes. Okay, the Imperial Conference. Now, we got minus 100 relations with all Dominions, but if we did everything correctly, we should still have plus 100 with all of them. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, and that means uh, the instructions are, are in the description as well. But that means that we can pick all of these decisions uh, without uh, spending additional political power. 
However, the reason why I say that you should keep some uh, extra political power with you is that uh, if your dominions are at less uh, than 100 opinion of you, in fact, if they are at 90 or plus, uh, from 90 to 100 opinion of, your, uh, opinion of you, you should spend uh, 25 political power for each decision. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So when I pick the first one, we get an event... Uh, and it says, let's hope that they agree, not spend anything, or we can spend 25 political power, or we can spend 50 political power. So you should spend 25 if the opinion is between 90 and 99, nothing if it's at 100, and 50 political power if the opinion is between 80 and 90. If the opinion is below 80, even spending 50 political power will not guarantee that they accept, so you should also guarantee them. Guaranteeing the independence of a country does increase uh, their opinion of you. Though, as you can see, it becomes quite expensive in terms of uh, political power. By the way, everything I just said mostly applies to the Imperial Federation. These other ones, they can still uh, refuse even if you spend political power. So, uh, we are not going to spend any political power here. In the meantime, by the way, we are going to pick uh, Suppress uh, Subjects. See, Canada refused despite the opinion of us being uh, the highest possible. But that's okay, because these are minor decisions. We don't particularly care about these ones. We do care about the last one, though. They're not completely useless, though. See, for example, the bonuses that you can see down there for 365 days, uh, they are pretty good bonuses, and we get them because they uh, accepted. And we get them for each uh, of them uh, accepting, so that's very good, actually. The appeasement, uh, pay attention, because this one you can only pick if you're at peace, so uh, if you were still involved in your wars in Europe, you need to be careful because uh, we have a limited amount of time to complete this, so that's a bit risky. And finally, the Imperial Federation, again, as I mentioned, in this case we don't need to worry, so we can just hope that the Dominions agree, and with 100 opinion of us, uh, it's guaranteed uh, that all of them uh, will agree, so we don't need to worry about that, that's all of them. So this was a success. So what happens now? What happens now is that in order to pick the next focus, which is the Imperial Federation, we need all of them to be a uh, Rake's Commissariat, at least. So we lack South Africa, Canada, Australia and uh, New Zealand. Only India is already in the right spot. Let's see how far we are from getting the other ones, though, because I think we are pretty close. What we will probably lack the most is political power. In fact, at this point, since that's the main issue, We'll actually stop, uh, suppress subjects, uh, so we get more political power. Because I think with our convoys uh, that we built from the very early game, uh, we should be able to decrease their autonomy right away. Start land lease, uh, you send convoys, uh, now they had 1000 points of autonomy, so we want to decrease that. So about 1400 convoys will do it, you can check down here. Then uh, Australia was uh, only 200, should be easy. Send convoys for 200 points. And New Zealand was about 500. And I believe uh, the other one, which was Canada, is already basically there. The autonomy will also decrease by itself, by the way. So. And we got a claim on Portugal. Let's see if we can do it or if they join some weird coalition. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. This is something you really want to uh, avoid. You don't want uh, Chile to be involved uh, in your wars. That's uh, very, very annoying because uh, it will be considered a major, meaning we need to go down there. That's not happening, so I guess uh, no Portugal for us this time. You got away with it, Portugal. Good job. You're safe for now. Unless, unless I come back to this run at some point. And go for the full world conquest. Uh, Italy is not a priority. And the priority is uh, New Zealand and South Africa. Okay, we got everything we need. So we can pick the Imperial Federation. And we're going to do that right away. Now, the only thing we want to do is, uh, before the Imperial Federation uh, focus is uh, completed, we also want to create uh, the Pan-North American State, and that's the trick that we're going to use uh, to core the United States. So, at this point, uh, we create the Pan-North American State, uh, we will uh, break the game for a bit, and then uh, when the game uh, comes back to life, there will no longer be the British Empire here, there will be, there will no longer be Canada up here, there will be a, a new Dominion. Maybe, or maybe not. There we go. The Dominion of uh, North America, which has course on uh, Canada and the United States, uh, and that Dominion will be annexed by us. Only three more days, uh, two more days, and there we go. 
The Imperial Federation is completed. The Empire strikes back. There we are. Our final goal is achieved. The Rise of the Empire. Let's give it a couple of days to register the new factories and stuff. We're not done yet though, because we, we also need to take... Um, we also need to take Italy. I just need a little bit more political power. And then we can also form the European Union. So this is only... This is only the first part of it. What did we achieve by creating the empire? Well, what we achieved is uh, we called uh, our dominions. Uh, as you can see, Canada is uh, uh, a core state. The United States, uh, all of the United States are a core state. South Africa is a core. Australia is a core. New Zealand is a core. Unfortunately, uh, the um, Raj is not a core. India remains as an uh, occupied state. That's something we cannot, uh, we cannot change. Very happy that we are able to do this in early 1941, in mid-1931. That's, that's impressive. Okay, we can uh, annex Italy. And with Italy annexed, we should also be able to realize the European Union. It doesn't have a cost, that's amazing. So what this does is uh, it gives us cores on uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Italy and Germany. Let's do it. Unification of uh, Europe. And I will end on the 30th of uh, December, just to show that we did all of these in uh, 1941. So, that's how P, the fascist uh, United Kingdom can be. Now, of course, I know many of you suggested it in the comments. Why don't you just go for the civil war? And yes, the civil war is very strong. But I wanted to go for a fascist UK path without uh, a civil war. You know, fighting a civil war is always a bit uh, challenging. You need to win it. Uh, you need to play it well. I don't like cheesing the, the civil war. So, I will definitely cover that too in a future video. But for now, you have a very solid guide on how to make uh, the UK insanely 7 million manpower with uh, a limited conscription, uh, 1,600 factories in 1941, and uh, this is how much of the world uh, we already control. So if you wanted to go for a full world conquest, uh, of course it would be it would be very easy. We are not going to do that uh, in this run. This is the end of the run. This is the real grand finale. I'm uh, very very satisfied with how this run went. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if, you try, if you're trying it, I think it's fairly, fairly easy and straightforward. But if you're encountering any difficulties, uh, feel free to let me know. And uh, feel free to let me know if you have any other suggestions. And then uh, I can't wait to share with you also uh, in future updates, uh, of course, the Civil War version of, uh, of this guide. In which we probably achieve the same results even earlier in the game. Guys, if you enjoyed this uh, video and this run, uh, as you can see, a lot of work went into it. Uh, so I would really appreciate if you could uh, show it by liking the video, letting me know in the comments. And of course, uh, subscribing to the channel, which always helps a lot. And uh, well, nothing else really. I, I will be working in the next uh, few weeks on uh, uh, updating some of the older guides. The Soviet Union will be the first one. I also plan to work on France again. So for a few weeks, uh, you will see some uh, older guides being updated and uh, renewed. They, they really needed it. For the Soviet Union in particular, I think I will make a step-by-step -step guide this time. So it will be an unedited video in which I also share the updated version. And if you're a member of the channel, um, I'm also reworking many of the spreadsheets, making them a bit easier to read. Uh, I added a, another file uh, which includes all of the abbreviations that I'm using. That's really all for this video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.